Christmas gifts feature now. And uh, if you're struggling to find the perfect gift for that special someone, then we may be able to help you. Um, <laughs> maybe you'd like to take your inspiration from News International and give someone a £10.9 million pound payoff. Uh, because Ooh, that's was that for us, John? Was that for well, us? No, it was. That's the point, Andy. All right. It was. That's what they gave to Rebecca Brooks in compensation for loss of office after she lost her job following her involvement with a phone hacking scandal. And that's a pretty great gift, Andy. Cause they, you know, they, they could have got her £10.9 million in gift certificates, but then she'd have had to spend them at those particular stores. Now she can just spend the money anywhere. Yeah. And, or on lawyers, which is oh, <laughs> not the most likely it, receptacle. Well, the point is she can choose. Yeah. Interestingly, Andy, when we were fired from the Times, I don't recall getting a £10.9 million pound no. payoff do you maybe that checks in the post or do you have my 10.9 million pound check <laughs> well, at home andy well can i pick it up when i'm in london next week um, well we need to talk about it john because <laughs> you know i've picked up a lot of costs over the years you know, so. <laughs> you know what I mean? not... that's always the headline figure isn't it you know, the real uh, yeah. amount is often so much right. less perhaps our mistake though andy was that we weren't fired for being involved in phone hacking, we were fired for being annoying. And, you know, it, it turns out that just... Anno- it, annoying and pointless. It just, doesn't get, it just doesn't get you the kind of se- same kind of severance pay as right. an issue. If you'd spent your time, Andy, hacking phones instead of hacking out puns, we'd be millionaires <laughs> by now. I just wish I'd had the foresight to ask Santa for that when I was a little boy, Andy, sitting on his lap in Birmingham... Shopping centre saying, well, Santa, I'd like a football and a bike and a £10.9 million payoff for helping British journalism sink to a new low, please. <laughs> well, you know, if you're asking for it, they'll probably get it. You know, he's good like that. Now, if, if you're looking for a gift for someone that's a bit out of the ordinary, then how about this? The first ever African City edition of the uh, famous board game Monopoly has been launched, and the city in question is Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, Two countries in Africa already have Monopoly editions, Morocco and South Africa, but there is no single city that has its own customised edition until now. And if it seems a slightly odd choice, Lagos, it's worth knowing that it's actually one of the fastest-growing cities in the world. And there was a lot of speculation over what areas would make it to the various squares on the board. The coveted Mayfair slot for the most expensive property went to Banana Island, and the least coveted, uh, the cheapest slot, On the board, the Old Kent Road spot, if you will, went to Makoko, which is apparently a slum on stilts over the city's lagoon. (laughs) and Slightly better than the Old Kent Road in London. Wow. I mean, that's... Exactly. (laughs) It does kind of put the divide between the developed and the developing world into perspective. (laughs) Because the Old Kent Road, sure, it's not the nicest area in London, Andy, but it is, frankly, to put this in the most pleasant possible way, a f*** of a lot nicer (laughs) than a slum on stilts over a lagoon. (laughs) Banana Island is a man-made island for the super wealthy, in which they can mm-hmm. cut themselves off from the people whose resources and money they have effectively stolen. <laughs> Sorry, in which they can give themselves a bit of peace and quiet away from the hectic task <laughs> of dragging their country forward to become a 21st century economic powerhouse. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, one of the headlines I saw was, Africa gets its first version of Monopoly. Well, try telling that to the 19th century colonialists. <laughs> exploited Africa until there were almost no ploits left to X. Uh, the scramble for Africa uh, might sound like a charity fundraising crawl through a giant sandpit to raise awareness of the plight of the Saharan desert donkey, but it was in fact a 19th century charity fund stripping e- event over several decades to raise awareness of the need for European countries to establish economic control over the entire world that would sustain them for the next hundred years and provide them with a steady supply of tusks with which to ward off burglars. <laughs> Uh, other aspects of uh, the game have been uh, specially tailored for Lagos, like the go-to-jail cards, which read, go to jail, go directly to Kirikiri Jail, referring to the city's maximum security prison. Uh, one of the chance cards reads, for attempting to bribe a law enforcement agent, pay a fine. Another says, you've been caught driving against traffic, report for psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> and I'm guessing that the other Nigerian chance cards read, uh, you've been kidnapped and a ransom has been demanded for your return. Lose a turn and a finger. And uh, a Nigerian prince has inherited millions of dollars. Send him $500 in cash immediately and you can share part of that fortune. <laughs> but um, that, that's an interesting one about the um, attempting to bribe a, a police officer. Um, yeah. Because surely the reaction to that is just bribe him with a bit more because that's <laughs> Nigeria yes. has quite spectacular levels of corruption a former senior world bank 
uh, world banker, Obi Ezekwesili, uh, stated that $400 billion of Nigeria's oil revenue has been stolen or misspent since 1960. Now, that, Holy that's, shit. I mean, that's quite a lot, particularly when you consider that around 80 million people, over half the population, live on less than $2 a day. So oh $2 billion dollars a year of oil is just stolen, John. So, oh my God. so there's always loopholes in the rules in, uh, in Lagos Monopoly. For example, if you buy an oil well, then you can just help yourself to all the money in the bank and declare yourself the winner of the game. <laughs> Or if you're still stumped for gifts, you uh, may want to take some inspiration from Silvio Berlusconi, who has decided to surprise Italy with the gift of himself. <laughs> In fact, he's not just giving himself to Italy, Andy. He's giving himself to the whole planet. That's he's right, tying though. a He's tying a bow around his penis and saying, <laughs> Happy Christmas, world. Lots of love, Silvio. <laughs> uh, what's happened was uh, that the... Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti has announced that he will step down from office after losing the support of Berlusconi's party, triggering an Italian election early next year in which Berlusconi, in a shock move, has <laughs> announced that he will run. So, you know what this means, Andy? The horn dog is about to return to his own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> this is all the more impressive, seeing as how you might remember, Buglers, just six weeks ago, Berlusconi was sentenced to four years in jail for fraud. <laughs> It's a Christmas miracle, Andy! <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as you say, John, I mean, this is, you know, in what's been a tough year for the world, this yeah. is a shaft of light. The world in 2012 yeah. has had a lot of problems. The Syrian sure. crisis has rumbled on like the indigestible curry of conflict and compromise that it is. The Arab Very Spring nice. has proved to be not quite as boingy a spring as might have been ideal. The European economy has continued to fire bullets into its own balls while saying, why is this still hurting? I've coated these bullets in an anaesthetic. The, the American election showed quite how far the definition of democracy can be stretched and twisted without it snapping into pieces. And British morality has been on an all-expenses-paid scuba diving trip to the bottom of the ethical Marianas Trench. So what we need is a little bit of love. Wow, that's a hell of a review of the year, Andy. <laughs> Plus, there was the Olympics. You forgot that. Well, when sport did its best to provide that light during the Olympics and the Paralympics, but even that was not enough. It needed more. The magic royal baby will solve all the world's problems, yes. but it's not due out until the middle of next year. So bravely oh, God. stepping oh. into the breach to give us hope where all around is gloom. A one-man war against sanity and tedium. Yes. Silvio yes. Berlusconi riding oh. to the rescue like a morally inverted Robin Hood on a horse made of <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> At the first Christmas, John, God gave his only son to the world. Yes. Born under a Norwegian spruce and wrapped yes. in tinsel with some flashing lights round his head. Oh. So that we might be forgiven for our sins or something, rather, I forget. Testify. Well, boy, people found the loopholes in that being forgiven for sin in small print. But then, almost 2,000 years later, he gave the world his only Silvio Berlusconi. <laughs> that it might find laughter where otherwise yeah. there were only tears. Italy yes. has dabbled with technocracy. And it has responded to that by saying, Mamma mia, no, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't want Berlusconi back for what he does, John. Obviously not. They're not that crazy as a nation. It wants yeah. Berlusconi back for what he is and what he represents. The utopian democratic ideal that anyone can rise to the top, provided that they are a lunatic with a wide range of social psychoses and aversion <laughs> to not putting their peniasses in things, industrial strength, makeup and hair dye, and ruthless control of the media. He's an oh. inspiration to us all, John. Oh, I th the truth is, I think we all saw this coming from a mile off because <laughs> the choice between Mario Monti and Berlusconi was always going to be a difficult one for the Italians. It's like choosing between broccoli and cocaine. You know that one's good for you. The problem is you're addicted to cocaine. <laughs> and the two men couldn't be more different. On the one hand, Mario Monti is an economist and an academic, a dour man tasked with imposing strict austerity measures and balancing Italy's books. On the other hand, Berlusconi is a one-man walking Cialis commercial. <laughs> he walks around all day in the permanent haze of a chemically induced boner. So, <laughs> it, it, it looks like Italy is about to once more seriously consider taking back a man who not only got them into this financial mess in the first place, but who has also been charged with, among other allegations, bribery, drug trafficking, prostitution, <laughs> mafia collusion, false accounting and embezzlement. <laughs> Let me tell you, Andy, the only crime that Berlusconi is guilty of is being too Italian. <laughs>
That, as well as perjury, illegal party <laughs> financing and fraud. Look, Italy. Italy, look, t- taking him back once is an understandable mistake. Taking him back twice is because we don't know Silvio like you know Silvio. He's a good boy. But re-electing him four times, that's going to start to seem like you have a serious self-esteem problem. <laughs> I'm telling you, Andy, it turns out the only way that Italians can make clean breaks with their leaders is if they end up hanging them on meat hooks outside <laughs> petrol stations. And this, this might all seem absolutely crazy, but here is the thing. You've got to look at this from Italy's point of view. Their economy is in the toilet. Unemployment is over 11%. It's not fun over there. And that's a country built on fun. The difference between Mario Monti and Berlusconi is this. Let's say you're at a very boring party. No one is really having a good time. And then your crazy friend turns up with a keg of homemade tequila and a trunk full of Mexican fireworks. Sure, you know that the house is going to get wrecked, but you also know that the party is about to get a f*** of a lot more interesting. (laughs) So I guess what I'm saying is, good luck to you, Italy, you crazy bastards. (laughs) And I think, John, Mario Monti deserves a lot of credit here yes. for resigning because he's clearly looked at himself in the mirror and then he's looked over his shoulder at his nation, <laughs> Italy. And to his eternal credit, he's said to himself, no, I, Mario Monti, cannot give the Italian public what they want. I might be able to give them what they need, but I cannot give them what they want. And he clearly wants Berlusconi <laughs> back just as much as everyone else. Yeah, yeah. He's a Is he not Italian, Andy? That's right. If you cut him open, is he not delicious? <laughs> the point is, Buglers, you don't need to get gifts for anyone, because Berlusconi might be coming back. 